The first of these two images was published in Strange Magazine No. 19 in spring 1998. Dr. Carl Schuker, prolific author of cryptozoological books and articles, submitted the photo, having received it from Matthew Bile, who in turn had obtained it from another party, who could not be reached by Bile or editor Mark Kervinsky for further information. Kervinsky was not impressed, writing, the photo is clearly a cut-and-paste job as demonstrated by the sharp edges of the creature's wing and the disparity in contrast in the background photo element and the cut in creature. As the Thunderbird photo's fame spreads, we expect to see more hoaxes of this sort. Mark was certainly spot-on in that prediction. In the very next issue of Strange Magazine, reader Larry Blamire identified the hoaxed image as having been altered, and flipped from a historical photo depicting the capture of outlaw and train robber John Sontag. A posse captured Sontag and posed for a photograph with the incapacitated outlaw at the Battle of Stone Corral near Visalia, California on June 11, 1893. Sontag was still alive when the photograph was taken but died from his gunshot wounds or tetanus on July 3. The second version of this hoaxed image is more nebulous in origin although it appears like a second attempt to create a more convincing Thunderbird photo using elements of the Sontag photograph as a base. The earliest appearance of this second image that is still available online, although now without the image, is an article about Thunderbirds by Sean Lindsay that was published on Heckler Spray on March 13, 2006. Lindsay did not write anything about the image itself. Famed cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman noticed the Thunderbird photo in Lindsay's article and referenced it in a March 14th entry on his Cryptozoo News blog. Coleman dismissed it as a just another computer created lost Thunderbird photo. One of the most intriguing examinations of this second image was in a May 9, 2011 post by Dale Drennan on his Frontiers of Zoology website. Drennan recalled first seeing the image in the late 1990s on a creationist website, in a gallery of photos purporting to depict pterosaurs that had survived extinction. It is worth noting that some of the images that supposedly show dead pterosaurs have been presented as genuine on young earth creationist websites. These platforms have a mission, to argue a literal interpretation of the Bible in which the earth is less than 10,000 years old and all creatures were directly created in their present forms by God rather than having evolved over millions of years. It is easier to believe some pterosaurs might have survived over a shorter span of time, and the missing Thunderbird photo is often tied into those efforts. In any case, Drennan proceeded to posit an interesting theory that perhaps this composite was much older than the Internet originating as a gag or souvenir postcard from the American Southwest in the early 20th century. If that were true, he argued, it could indeed be the original Thunderbird photo, a photostat of which cryptozoology forefather Ivan T. Sanderson claimed to once have in his files. Drennan pointed out that the image also matches the photo that popular writer John Keel recalled seeing in Sanderson's possession. So why was everyone going around looking for a photo that showed a bird nailed to a barn with six cowboys standing under it with fingertips touching to mark six fathoms? Asked Drennan. Because that was the remaining published description of the photo from Saga magazine. This is a compelling argument, and the second photo, with its pterosaur that looks like a model, does resemble the style of other prank images and postcards from around the early 20th century. However, the fact that there is another, seemingly earlier, version of the hoaxed photograph, and of arguably lesser quality, does suggest that both probably originated during Strange Magazine's investigation of the Thunderbird photo in the late 1990s.